Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video I'm dealing with the evil spirits uh, and I'll teach you whether or not, first of all, they exist or not. Uh, if you are from a church or a congregation or a place or even from no uh, organization but you don't believe in the existence of the evil spirits or Satan then you need to listen and watch this video. And if you do believe in the existence of evil and evil spirits, then you still need to watch because you need to know how to deal with those things and how to um, be equipped to fight against them. According to the scriptures, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we can clearly see that Satan does exist. Satan is a real person. Is a fallen angel when he was cast down from heaven he brought with him thousands of angels which are also fallen angels and they're all his demons now in the Old Testament God forbid put a law there against any kind of divination sorcery invoking spirits conjuring up spirits of dead, dead and um, witchcraft and casting spells and all sorts of things like that uh, which by itself means that they were doing those kind, kind of things and there was such thing as uh, the conjuring of the spirit and invoking the uh, spirits of the dead and this is just the uh, tip of the iceberg in the New Testament Clearly, it's written, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers and powers and authorities in heavenly realms. When Jesus cast demons out of a demon-possessed person, some entities move from this person to the pigs, which again proves the existence of evil spirits and not just nothing but be, I say this because lots of churches lots of organizations who believe in Christ and confess uh, their faith in Christ and the blood of Christ and, this, and, and his ultimate sacrifice but they don't believe in the existence of demons and Satan and they laugh at you and they say this is just in your thoughts no, it is not in your thoughts. When demons were cast out of a person into pigs, it wasn't his thoughts. When he was tormented by the evil spirits, it wasn't his thoughts. There is a lot more to it. I'm not going into all of that. You can read all about it in my article. But here, I'm just to touch the surface and tell you by basically bullet points, just to say, what there is out there, there is a spiritual minefield out there, uh, there is a spiritual warfare and you have to be aware of that. If you're not aware of that, you will be defeated. Whether you're a Christian, born again or not, it don't make any difference. You still need to be equipped. Now, evil spirits, basically you all consider them all from Satan. Whether they are demons, little demons, big demons, they're all evil spirits. They all emanate from Satan. They're ruled and under the control of Satan. Now, they affect people in different ways. They can afflict Christians. They can possess people uh, outside the body of Christ, if you like. If they're not saved, they can actually possess them. They can possess objects, houses, cars. They can be attached to objects like your clothes and, uh, and the like. For instance, in the Old Testament, when the priest used to go to the temple and offer the sacrifice, the priests were told by God, when they're coming out, they have to take all their garments out, off 
and put other garments on because those holy garments that they were wearing to go into the Holy of Holies to present the blood sacrifice of the animals uh, to God, they had to take them off because it says they might touch the holy garments, they're so holy, they might touch other people outside the temple and consecrate them. You understand? This is holy. Now, if this principle works for in that sense, that a holy garment, something that has been sanctified by the priest, by the Holy of Holies, the Holy of Holies itself has sanctified that, God has sanctified that, then it can, by just touching people, can sanctify people. And God didn't want that. God wanted them to present their cases and their sacrifice through the high priest. They had to go through that hierarchy in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Apostle Paul's handkerchiefs were passed, uh, passed around and just touching the handkerchief healed people. Again, we can see the same principle. The handkerchief, the garments of the high priest were sanctified, they were holy, they had that anointing, if you, if you want to call that an anointing, then that could just by touching that, you could be healed or you could be even sanctified. The same principle applies if your objects, the objects that you have in your house or you're buying from various places, you could borrow it from different people, you could buy it from a second-hand shop, especially second-hand shops because you don't know where they come from to begin with. Those kind of things might well have got some attachments with them. They might have spiritual attachments with them, depending on where they come from. So you need to sanctify them, wash them, if you really need to use them. But uh, some of these objects, they have clear signs. They are actually omens. They're actually clear signs and symbols of Satan or satanic movement. Uh, you don't want to have those anywhere around you or on your body or in your house or in your uh, places or workplaces or anywhere around you or near you. These objects cannot even be cleansed because they are pure satanic. They are signs and symbols of Satan or his dominion, his organizations. So that's one thing, but usually when a person is possessed or a house is possessed and filled with the spirits, they are invited. You usually find the root cause of that is that somewhere along the line, the spirits have been invited. You might not have invited the spirits yourself, but somebody has done that. Your child, your relatives, your friends, your family, your parents, or, or the owners of the house before you. Somebody has practiced something there in that house that has started this whole chain reaction. They do not come unless they're invited. Particularly if you are a believer. If you're a believer, a born again believer, filled with the Holy Spirit, I stress on that because there are lots of people who go to church I'm not talking about those people, the churchgoers. I'm not talking about those people who are doing the talk, but they're not practicing and they don't actually believe it. Now, if you don't believe or you don't know or you're in doubt that you have the Holy Spirit, I suggest that you need to get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I have another video about salvation, the path of salvation. You need to watch that and be truly saved and be filled with the Holy Spirit. The only weapon you can have, the only weapon you can possibly have to fight with these spiritual forces is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, uh, lots of organizations, churches, lots of uh, even other religions, other faiths, who have tried and are trying, even New Age, they are trying and they do these things to cast demons or 
whatever they call them, bad energy, negative energy, or whatever they call them, uh, it doesn't matter what they call them, these are all evil spirits. Now, they can try, and they have tried to get rid of them or cast them out in their own ways, without the Holy Spirit, without the power of the Holy Spirit in them, but they've all been either temporary or have completely failed to do that. At best, what they've done has been temporary solution or a pain relief, if you like. Uh, Jesus is talking about those kind of things and he says, when the spirit leaves a house that he's occupied, the evil spirits, when he's talking about the evil spirits, and he makes an example about that. He says, it goes into dry places uh, and it comes back when it comes back, it finds the place nice and orderly and in order and clean. It goes and finds seven more spirits and brings with itself or with himself and resides in it. So just because temporarily you've been cleared of that evil spirit or those evil spirits or uh, entities, if you like, doesn't necessarily mean you have actually been cleansed or your house has been cleansed or yourself have been delivered because the only way you can deliver a demon possessed person from the oppression of evil spirits or cleanse a property or, or an object is through the power of the Holy Spirit there is no other way there are paranormal investigators who can come and consult you and tell you yes there is some activities in your property which basically just tells you that you're not crazy and and that's all it is and they charge you a lot of money just to say that you don't need that all you need is the free gift of God and that is the Holy Spirit and you can receive that through the blood of Jesus Christ. But well, have the motive right first. Have your motive right. Be saved. Repent of your sins. Receive the salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Receive the Holy Spirit and equip yourself with the scripture and fight against the spiritual forces in heavenly realms. The demon possession is one thing or evil spirit possession of a person is one thing usually in most cases uh, the people who are not believers if you are a born-again believer you cannot be possessed there is no way on earth you can be possessed by the evil spirits if you are a Holy Spirit filled because you are possessed by the Holy Spirit you cannot be possessed by evil spirit at the same time as being possessed by the Holy Spirit. It's just not possible. It's contrary. The worst Satan can do to a born-again Christian filled with the Holy Spirit is to afflict them uh, with sickness, disease, and some, you know, activities just to bother them, to trouble them, uh, or, or, or affect or afflict the people around them in their family to hurt them, like he did with Job in the Old Testament. As a person filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a shield around you, a shield of protection, which is the blood of Jesus. Now Jesus is making a good example of that when he is healing a lady on a Sabbath and the Pharisees and teachers of the law are condemning him for, for doing that on a Sabbath when he uh, heals the lady of her back problem. And he says to them, uh, this is a child of Abraham who has been oppressed by Satan for these many years. Which one is better to consider, to observe your Sabbath or Heal a child of Abraham who has been oppressed by Satan. But what I'm trying to say is, it's a demonic affliction, a sickness 
that is appearing on the surface a disease um, which is on the surface but in depth beyond, beyond the physical condition there is a spiritual condition now Jesus can see this is a spiritual problem more than a physical problem nowadays everything is physical if you go to a doctor and you're dumb and deaf and blind or you're having a fit you are bipolar schizophrenic all these these names they would create these names to justify themselves to say we know what it is and we have a cure for that which which they don't they usually say there's no cure for that because there is no spiritual realm as far as they're concerned because they can't deal with that so they create a name for that invent a name and invent some some medicine and um, solution for for that kind of physical condition i'm not suggesting if you are bipolar or schizophrenic or you're having fits here and there it's all demonic i'm not suggesting that but it could well be so just because the doctor says this doesn't necessarily mean it's a physical condition in fact most cases most problems that we have these days are demonic not all of them but mostly they are and there are lots of people who are affected by this these spiritual problems in their own lives but they're not even aware of it I have seen them personally I know this is spiritual I've seen them in shops in restaurants in you know public places I've seen them and I can almost immediately discern this is a spiritual condition but they have got a physical solution for it a medical solution for it and you know you can try to talk to these people some are willing to listen to you some are not some are more open-minded than the others now we've talked about the evil spirits the evil spirits do exist and they are real there is a real evil world out there and you need to be aware of that you need to be equipped and be aware of what's going on in your life spiritually and you need to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to fight this battle there is only one way and that only way one way is through the power of the Holy Spirit right I hope this message helped you and if you need more help in this regard please send us a message or, or write a comment under the video and I will get back to you as soon as I can I like you to also read my article on this and direct anybody that you know with spiritual problems in their lives to this video to help them and if you've been helped by this video I would like to hear from you and rejoice in the fact that Jesus has delivered you from your condition. Thank you for watching and may God bless you.